is Tony Montana, famously said in the 1983 film Scarface. This country, you gotta make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Well, it's safe to say that some motley crews have mastered the subtle art of controlling money and power, but the road they took was a brutal and bloody one. Today, we're looking into the 10 most dangerous gangs in the world. What's up, Fagmatics? This is Discovery Amuse, serving up your daily dose of the most outrageous, outlandish, and out-of-this-world fun facts. Our top terrible tribe is shaping to be the future of the Mexican cartel, so stick around for that. Number 10, Aryan Brotherhood. Blood in, blood out. That's the motto of America's largest and deadliest prison gang. When the Aryan Brotherhood wants to kill you in prison, they don't stab you once, they don't stab you twice. They stab you 117 times. One gets inducted into the Aryan Brotherhood by way of drawing blood from rival gang members or corrections officers. And the only way out is death. The white supremacist fraternity was first formed in 1964 when Irish bikers organized to fight a violent black prison gang. Around 20,000 members of the AB are involved in practically every crime you can think of, from drug trafficking, gambling, and extortion to murder for hire, armed robbery, and counterfeiting. And when they say, snitches get stitches, you best believe they mean it. At some point, AB members made up one-tenth of one percent of the U.S. prison inmate population, but they were responsible for 18 percent of all prison murders. Whoa, that's some sick stats. Keep watching because you wouldn't want to cross paths with the members of our top gang. Number 9. Crips When Serena Williams did this victory dance after winning in the 2012 London Olympics, she was met with some criticism, mostly from white folks. Because the Crip walk isn't just any dance step. The fancy footwork was actually popularized by one of the most notorious street gangs in America. Murders, robberies, extortions, and drug dealings are just some of the illegal operations in the criminal portfolio of the original Crip homies, aka the Crips. As one of the largest African-American street gangs in Los Angeles, members have been known to wear a signature blue color to signify their allegiance to the crew. In the late 60s, the Crips was founded by Raymond Washington, who was back then a prominent local crime boss. His tough reputation attracted members into the fold. You were with Raymond, you were with the one who was capable of protecting everybody. The membership kept growing as the crack cocaine dealing boomed in the 80s. Eventually, the Crips found new homies with Mexican cartels, helping its expansion beyond Los Angeles. But as the Crips' influence grew stronger, the gang drew more enemies, particularly this next group on the list. Number 8. Bloods if the Crips were in the blue corner, in the red corner were the Bloods. Angered by the Crips crossing over their turf, the gang called Black Pea Stones aligned with other gangs to combat the expansion of the Crips. And to distinguish themselves from their rivals, the newfound alliance wore red, from which the nickname Bloods came from. In the next few years, boundary lines were drawn and the Crips and Bloods scrambled for territorial control. Members of the Bloods also embraced other unique identifiers, including various hand signs and physical markings, notably a dog paw tattoo. They focused on crack cocaine in the 1980s and earned a reputation for their aggression and violence. The rivalry between the Crips and the Bloods became so hostile that in 1987, there was one gang-related murder reported in L.A. every 24 hours. It became a vicious cycle of violence fueled by drugs and territory. Because instead of having a, a five-shot Saturday night special where you shoot five shots, they pull the trigger and now 20 shots are flying out, and those shots are flying everywhere. So you have a lot more innocent people getting hit. The long-standing rivalry even earned its spot in pop culture, including the 1988 film Colors, and even the video game GTA San Andreas. Ah, oh, here we go again. Number seven, First Capital Command. With its humble beginnings as a small prison gang in the 1990s, Sao Paulo, Brazil, the First Capital Command has now grown into a transnational organization, with members in as far as Europe and Asia. Do you see the trend of bad guys going up the ladder? 
Yeah, please don't get any ideas. Anyway, the group operates behind bars now, moving drugs and robbing financial institutions and security transfer companies, those that will give them the big bucks. In 1999, the group successfully pulled off the biggest bank heist in Sao Paulo's history, making out with more than 32 mil. In 2017, the gang was linked to the $40 million robbery of a transport company in Paraguay in what was dubbed the heist of the century. Suddenly we heard non-stop banging. It lasted an hour. During that time, there were five grenades. The five were here in the house and we hid upstairs in my daughter's room. Number six, 14K Triad. We can't talk of brutality without going to the east. It may be the second largest triad group next to rival Sun Yi An. But the 14K Triad more than holds up on its own. The anti-communist action group was first formed by Kuomintang Lieutenant General Katsu Wang in 1945 in Guangzhou, China, but relocated its headquarters to Hong Kong. Its membership engages in large-scale criminal activity including but not limited to drug trafficking, illegal gambling, loan sharking, money laundering, murder, arms trafficking, prostitution, human trafficking, extortion and counterfeiting. Whoa, that's one heck of a resume. The 14K Triad is known to continuously expand its presence in other parts of the world, so their count is more than 14,000 by now, for sure. Number 5. Mexican Mafia Don't be fooled by their uninspired name. Its members are mostly cold-blooded killers, and once you're in, only death will do you part. The Mexican Mafia was born in California, USA in 1957 when Hispanic street gang members from different LA neighborhoods banded together to protect themselves from other groups behind bars. Luis Flores, the main founder of the so-called La M, or The M, convinced wearing parties to set aside their differences inside the prison system to build notoriety for the gang. Flores enlisted violent members to achieve the initial goal of terrorizing the system and living the life, even while confined. In the 90s, the group solidified their status on the streets by forming their own army of street soldiers, who ensure the steady stream of money to their incarcerated gang members. The Mexican Mafia was the first to actually do that, transform themselves from a purely prison-centered criminal organization into one that had a far-reaching influence on the street. Government records say there are about 500 official members, but the Mexican Mafia has 1,000 members who are willing to get their hands dirty for a shot at becoming a full member. Number 4. Shower Posse no, their members don't actually bathe together because that would be just too awkward. Instead, the infamous Shower Posse Gang from Jamaica got its name because of their penchant for showering their enemies with bullets. It's no wonder why the gang is considered one of the most violent groups worldwide. Drug and arms trafficking are among the Shower Posse's widespread criminal activities. In the 1980s and early 1990s, the Shower Posse and its offshoots killed about 1,400 people nationwide. Its leader, Christopher Koch, continued the legacy of his father, Lester, who founded the group in Tivoli Gardens, and acted like some twisted version of Robin Hood who shared his illegally acquired wealth to the community. He was your quintessential benevolent despot. You ask him, you know, what he did in Jamaica, he will tell you he was a community activist. Koch was essentially able to build his own kingdom in Tivoli Gardens, thanks to his generosity, which earned him the community's loyalty. But Koch's reign ended when the Jamaican government finally made their move into Tivoli Gardens to arrest him and his cohorts. Number 3. Mara Salvatrucha now here's a group that took its time to come up with a creative title. In Spanish, Mara is a euphemism for gang, Salva is for El Salvador, and Trucha means someone who's clever. This rambunctious group of street smart hooligans, otherwise known as MS-13, because their name can be quite the mouthful, started in LA's barrios during the 1980s and had close ties with the Mexican Mafia. It was formed by immigrants who had fled El Salvador's long and brutal civil war. MS-13 members are among the the vilest people with a penchant for killing using their weapon of choice, machetes. Most of the gang's revenue, for instance, comes from extortion. And the people that they're extorting more often than not 
are their neighbors, are the local shopkeepers. The gang also sought alliances with other organized crime entities, including Mexican drug cartels. According to FBI statistics, Mara Salvatrucha had between 6,000 and 10,000 members in the United States in the early 21st century. Number two, Andy Rangetta. Known as the most influential Italian mafia today with a stronghold in the European cocaine market, the Calabria-based mobsters are masters of trades popular among organized crime groups, drug trafficking, extortion, illegal waste trafficking, and money laundering. You better not mess with even a single member because they bring threats, torture, and even murder to those who stand in their way. To paint a picture of just how cruel and ferocious Andy Rangetta is, an issue of land ownership led to a woman being murdered and fed to the pigs in 2016. They also take no prisoners as they are known to dispatch even innocent kids. Even more despicable, they train foot soldiers at a very young age. You start with guns as a child. They make you shoot. They carry guns and you're a kid and it's all a game to you. The other kids have toy guns, but your guns are real. However, in January of 2021, in what is considered the largest mafia trial in decades, the ND Rangetta had its first day in court, which involved some 350 defendants, 600 lawyers, and 900 witnesses. The accused include politicians, police, and businessmen, and faced various charges such as murder, drug trafficking, corruption, and money laundering, among many others. Before we get to our number one pick, do us a solid and make sure to smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Don't forget to choose all so you won't miss out on any of the latest life-changing, boredom-busting content. And of course, be sure to turn on notifications in your app settings. Number one, New Generation Jalisco. Dubbed as Mexico's fastest rising cartel, this ruthless organization's foot soldiers have made Guadalajara and its outskirts a giant gravesite, with bodies littering drainage canals, fields, patios, and even yards of homes. It's been said that since a part of the cartel broke off, the killings in the city skyrocketed. Even in death, these guys show no mercy as the corpses found were dissolved in acid or lye, and some were just covered in plastic bags. When they come into an area, they really come in really hard and heavy, meaning they will go in and start on a killing spree. Thousands of civilians, police officers, and even influential people like judges and congressmen did not escape the cartel's wrath. This may sound like a movie scene, but their fighters once used a rocket-propelled grenade to bring down a military helicopter. Nemesio Cervantes, a.k.a. El Mencho, who leads the new generation Jalisco, is currently high on the DEA's list of most wanted men, and his cartel is believed to be responsible for one-third of all narcotics entering the U.S. He's the one that's responsible for sending the poison that's actually killing innocent women and kids. So what happens when someone's child dies? You know, good chance it probably came from this organization. So, which one of these dangerous gangs scared the living daylights out of you? Let us know in the comments section below. Hey, take home any of our exclusive gear by browsing our merch shelf or clicking the link in the video description. And while you're at it, take our quiz to find out how you can earn extra cash online doing what you do best. Awesome, right? So who are you gonna call to take down those baddies? How about one of the 10 most elite special forces in the world? Now that's an epic showdown I'd like to see. Till then, choose your friends wisely, Fact Natics, and we'll see you in the next video.